This is Michelle and I'm here today to share my third design team project for Country Craft Creations using the Farmhouse Market paper line by Cartabella. And uh, I um, have cut out my papers because we're going to need to do that with a tutorial. Some of the pages have to be papered before we can glue some stuff down. So I don't have a lot of that to show you, but um, I have used almost all of it. I don't have a whole lot left. but. Um, and I haven't finished decorating yet. Um, by the time you see this, you will have already seen the walkthrough and you'll see all the decorations, but this is what I have left over uh, for right now, but there's not gonna be a whole lot left when I get done with this. So anyway, <laughs> I thought we'd get started and uh, we're gonna be working on a folio today. The folio I'm calling the Farmhouse Market uh, Folio and it measures eight by eight and has a one inch spine and has some um, really cool new ideas that I thought I would play with today. So um, we're gonna get started. We're gonna make the folio and then I'll go through a couple of the things that I went ahead and um, prepared to decorate with. And um, then uh, I'll show you what, you know, you've already seen what I did with what I made for decorations um, using that. But anyway, let's get started. So um, there is a cutting list below in the description um, of all the pieces that you'll need. And then there's also a cutting guide on my blog. And I'll have a link to that as well in the description um, so that you um, can have all that information. And the cutting guide on my blog is actually a picture that I draw out and um, show you how to cut the pieces out of your cardstock in order to kind of try and minimize the, the amount of cardstock that you use. So um, I used 10 pieces of the artisan cardstock here by car, uh, from Country Craft Creations. So 10 pieces of cardstock. And I think I tried really hard to keep track of the pattern paper that I used. Um, but, you know, it gets kind of hard once you get all excited and start cutting stuff out. But I think I used about 14 pieces of pattern paper in order to make the album, um, you know, and to cover all the pages and everything that I put in it. So um, let's go ahead and get started with the base of this folio. So this is going to have a base, which is going to consist of a couple different pieces. And then we're going to add some pages into it. And I'm going to call those like the right flap and the left flap but we'll we'll get that as we're making the album okay so the first piece you're going to want base a and it is 12 by 8 so 12 inches by 8 inches and on the um, 12 inch side we're going to score just in two places at 7 and at 8 that's going to give us a 1 inch spine that will end up being on the left hand side so again it's 12 by 8 and on the 12 inch side we're going to score at 7 and we're going to score 8 and then we're going to need base piece b and it's the same size it's um, 8 by 12 or 12 by 8 and on the 12 inch side we're just going to score in a couple different spots here we're going to score at four and a half and at five and that's going to give us a one half inch uh, spine on the right hand side so again, 12 by eight for base piece B and four and a half and at five. So let's get, this is basically, this makes up the base of the album and then we're gonna build off of that. So you're just gonna take these pieces and do the usual fold and burnish your score lines, okay? And this is all about how it goes together and creates this album, which is going to be, I think, really fun for you. So, all right, so we got base piece B, and that's going to end up going on the uh, right side, and base piece A is going to go on the left. Okay, and what this is going to do, and I'm flipping and flopping because I'm trying to get it back in my brain, but these pieces are going to connect so that these two smaller pieces are actually going to connect in the back of the album and that's what's going to make the back of the album so then when you flip it over 
then the pieces will fold together like that. All right, so the back piece, the back page, which I, in this tutorial and everything, will call the midsection, needs to be eight inches across from those two score marks, okay? So we made the two score marks, one, two, and then here, one, two. So between those second score marks, this piece is gonna need to measure eight inches wide. So when you go to put it down to actually put it together, you can put it on your scoreboard and kind of butt that up there. So the A piece should be about four inches and the B piece should be about four and a half inches. And when you put that together, it should be eight inches across. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, so what I did when I was creating the demo for this was I took a piece of half inch score tape and put on one of these pieces like that and then this will be covered up with pattern paper so it's going to be okay all right and then line it up so however you're going to do this you can measure it at any point on your scoreboard um, and if it's easier for you if you don't really need a straight edge um, and if you want to just look at something like this um i have my grid here so i'm gonna line that up at like let's say like at two inches i'm gonna line that score line up at two inches so i know that i'm gonna want this score line to line up at 10. that will give me eight inches across okay and then just go ahead and line that up and lay it down all right, and that should give you an eight inch piece across. And I hope that makes sense. And I know that this is brown paper and I'm sorry, I know it's dark, but that's why I'm trying to really explain this, okay? So this was base piece A, okay, with your one inch spine on the left hand side. And then this is base piece B with the one half inch on this side and then between those spines should measure eight inches across okay and we just connected it through the middle all right and you know double check make sure everything lines up and it looks like i did a pretty good job so it should be eight inches across all right and then this album will be eight inches tall all right so that's the base of the album and that's pretty easy um pretty simple so two pieces of paper and now we've made our folio okay so then what we're gonna do is we're going to put this aside for just a second and we're going to grab what I call the left side flap and there's gonna be some cutting and some um, scoring on this so I'm gonna get my scoreboard and my scoring tool and put it in um, 12 by 12 and so for the left side midsection flaps, so this goes in the center of the album, we're gonna actually attach it to the center piece of that album, that eight inch piece that I showed you. So on, the, on one 12 inch side, score at half, at three quarters, and that at eight and a quarter, okay? So half, three quarters, and eight and a quarter, and then turn it, and I turned it counterclockwise, and score at eight inches and that's all you need to do for that piece so then what we're going to do with this piece is we're going to do a little bit of cutting so right here on this bottom flap this is a four inch flap here there's two score lines we're just going to cut those completely out and we are not going to miter or actually yes we are going to miter that because that's what's going to attach it to the page so but we're only going to miter this half inch part because this quarter inch score that we made is going to end up being another spine. So that'll be a quarter inch spine right there. So this half inch tab right here will adhere to the book and this quarter inch piece will be a spine. So you want to cut that straight across but miter the half inch piece. Okay, and then we'll miter the half inch piece up there. And then down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one cut and we're gonna cut up this score line on the bottom 
and we're going to cut all the way up to that score line. Make sure you cut out the score line. Oh, I can get a hold of it. Okay. And then the other side, I might have to do it on this side. Just gonna make sure to cut out that score line. Just take a wee bit off like that. Okay. Then let's get rid of this board for a second. What we're going to do is um, this piece here, we're gonna just make a couple folds. So this bottom flap here will fold up and that's gonna create a pocket. But do not glue this pocket down yet because you need to put pattern paper in here first. Okay, and we're gonna go through that after we could actually construct the book. And then this piece here, we're gonna turn it over. And it's just easier for me to do that, like that. And then we're going to fold that up. So then what we've got is the front page here. We're gonna have a pocket here and the sides are gonna be glued right here. And then when you turn this page, when you flip it, um, you're gonna have a pocket here because we're gonna glue these two sides here. And then we're gonna glue, um, you can either glue just the one side and have this be kind of an open-sided pocket or you can glue both sides and have it um, make a pocket. But we, we can't glue that now because you have to put the pattern papers on here. We don't have tabs to actually form the pockets. So we have to wait until we put the pattern paper on here, okay? So then the next thing is to just fold your score lines. That's going to create the attachment and the little spine piece here. Just be careful with that. It's harder to do with half inch. Right there. Okay, so now we have, if you can see the top view, we have the tab that's gonna attach, we have a quarter inch spine, and then we have our page. So let's grab our book. And this will be, this is my the front of my book. So we're gonna open it to the midsection. And this piece is going to adhere right here to the right of this one inch spine piece. All right. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna fold that down flat so I still have my quarter inch gusset here. And then we're gonna just apply some glue to here and glue it down. So let me get my art glitter glue. Um, again, I am using brown artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations and I'm also using the art glitter glue from Country Craft Creations. And it glues nice and it dries fast. So right to the inside of that score line. And we're gonna glue that down. All right, so this is the, we just finished the left side, what I call the midsection flap. This is the midsection that we're adhering it to. Okay, so that's gonna be that. So then what we're gonna do, we'll put this aside for now and we'll make the right side, which will adhere right here on the other side. So let's get that piece. Now this piece actually requires a couple different, or two different, two, two pieces. So we have the base page here and then we have, what did I, geez, I'm losing it. Okay. So we're gonna have two pieces that's going to create um, this particular flap. So um, the right, let's see, do I have this right? Yes, I do. Okay, so on the right side midsection flap, we got piece A and it's gonna be 12 by 12 and then we have piece B, which is four and a half by seven. On the four and a half by seven, we're gonna just score it at um, a half an inch or four inches, whatever. We need um, a half inch tab to attach it, okay? So you're just gonna do that. You're gonna fold and um, burnish and then we're gonna miter these corners. This is going to create a flap. Okay, so just like that. So flat piece B again was four and a half by seven and score it so that you have a half inch tab and then miter the corners. We'll put that aside for a second. Then here is the, the base piece of this section. Or this, um, this flap, I should say. Okay, so do a couple scores. 
So we're going to do it at four, and we're going to do a score at 11 and a half, and then we'll do a counterclockwise turn, and then we'll score at four. And we're going to do a little bit of cutting on this. We're going to end up um, creating some uh, flaps with this and another pocket. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this square out. We're going to leave that long 4x8 section because that is going to create a pocket on the other side. Okay. All right, so we just cut that square out. All right, and you can save this and use it for something else later, but that, that square, we don't need that. Then what we're gonna do, this is the attachment, this half inch piece here, that's the eight by a half an inch um, that we scored. So we're gonna cut and miter that, and then we're gonna miter this end, and then we're gonna cut this piece out right here. Okay, so what's going to happen with this page is, oops, hold on just a second, I'll be right there. Ah. Okay, so this piece, I'm just trying to make sure I get it right because I don't want to confuse anybody. So we just cut this square out, we don't need this. Then we're going to, we cut out this half inch piece, we mitered this, this is going to attach to the page on the right side. Okay, so this top section here is going to fold down like so. Let me get rid of this. Okay, that's going to create a flap. And then this piece here is going to add to the bottom and it's going to uh, create a flap. And it looks like, what did I do? I cut it a little bit wrong. Didn't I? Hold on just a second. I did. So what I did was I cut this wrong. So let's backtrack for just a second. This page actually should be 11 and a half. So we're going to fix this. This is going to be super easy to fix. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to go back in here and I'm going to score at 11. And then we're going to grab our scissors and sorry for the oopsie. I will put a disclaimer in here to hang tight before you cut anything. There we go. So we just need to take an extra half inch off, that's it. So I will fix that. And make myself a note. Okay. All right, so now we're back in business. These flaps need to be the same, okay? So they need to be seven and a half. This page is gonna be seven and a half wide. So we are going to, here's our tab. Now I can get rid of this. Here's our tab. This is going to adhere to the book. All right, this flap is going to go down. This extra piece here will be the bottom flap that goes here. And then this piece will fold over and on the other side of the page will create a pocket, all right? And again, this pocket will be glued down so you cannot glue it yet until you put your pattern paper down. So that's how that page is gonna be. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. Now, to be, be very careful, just make sure that your pages <clears throat> aren't going to like fold over each other so that they um, turn nicely, which this one does. So we're going to put 
put our glue down and I'm just going to put this right on top of the page like so and glue that down okay so you're going to have a page that looks like this and then when we put it in the book and we turn it, then we're going to have a little pocket here that we're not going to glue down quite yet. All right, so grabbing our book again, or our folio, I should say. Um, I'm going to open this flap that we just added, and we're going to add this flap right here to the inside of the spine. Okay, just right there. So... This does not have a gusset in it because it's going to go to the inside of the other flap that we just op or just added. So we just need to put glue on here without getting it all over our book. And then we're going to add it so that the flaps are on the top here. Right to the inside of that. Okay. Make sure it's nice and straight. Just like that. All right. So our midsection flap, the right midsection flap, is on. Okay. So essentially, that is the base of the book. So it'll close like that, and then this flap, and then this flap, and then this flap. And that will be our folio. Okay, so we got our base pieces, and then the left midsection flap, it'll have a pocket here, a pocket here, and a pocket here. Then you have your right midsection flap, it's going to open like this, put glue there, and then it'll open like this. There will be a pocket here, and then you have the midsection. So now we're going to add the rest of the goodies to the book. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some flat pockets. Now where these are going to go are these flat pockets are going to go so if let's say let's close our book so that we don't get confused. So when we open the book, the flat pockets we're going to put right here on on the base page. So when you open the book, the very first thing you're going to see is that. So that's where these are going to go. So you're gonna need two of these, and these measure five and a quarter by 10, you just need two, and we're going to put them in our scoreboard. And we're gonna score them at half an inch and at five and a quarter, and then turn it, and then score it at four and three quarters. And you're gonna do that for both of them, and then you're gonna miter the corners as shown. So let's, I did one already. We'll do the other and then we'll put it together. So this one, you can do them um, opposite, which I did, so that the folds are opposite. Uh, you can do them both the same. It doesn't really matter because you can just, you know, flip flop them. But if you want to do the score lines the way that the paper is going to score, then just do the other one the opposite. If you don't want to do that, you don't really have to. Since I'm using Artisan cardstock, you don't really need to because it's so amazing that it won't rip, which is nice. All right. So when we fold this up, we're going to make a, a create a pocket that opens to the side. So this top tab will adhere the pocket on the top side here. And then one of these will fold in, either one, doesn't really matter, um, to create the actual pocket. The one that's left over is going to be the attachment to the page. Okay, so um, we just need to do some folding and some burnishing. And I find that when I make pockets like this that actually have the tab that um, that will adhere, 
um, I like to fold the tab away from where we're gluing the pocket down because then it just um, seems to turn better. Maybe it's just me, but I, that's how what I think. So, so we're gonna have one that will open up this way, and one will open up the opposite way. And the pockets will open to the side. Okay, so we have our pockets. All right, so they will open to the side. Let's glue them down. Now, if you didn't want to have a pocket and you just want to have flaps, then you can do that too. Um, but this will give another extra um, place to put some pictures, which I think is kind of cool. And it's a fun way to make a pocket without having to cut a whole bunch of extra pieces. The other thing that I like to do is when um, I put my pockets on, or when, I, when I'm gluing my pockets like this, um, I like to have the bottom of the pocket be kind of on the outside of the side tab, because that way if you do slide your, your tag in, sometimes that'll help prevent your tag from catching on the edge of this. So I tend to try and do that. All right, so there's our pockets. Okay, so front of the pocket, back of the pocket with our tabs that's gonna attach. So let's get our book. So now we can go ahead and attach these to our book and you can do them like this or you can do them like this. We're gonna use a magnet closure so it doesn't really matter which way you wanna do it is fine. Um, I think when I was planning this, I did it like this, but I think I'm gonna change my mind and I'm gonna do that because I think it's kind of cool. And we will have plenty of space here to put a magnet so that we can do that. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to add glue to my tab and then just line it up the top and the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and just take my album my folio like this and do that okay and then I'm going to take my other one and I'm going to glue it just to the other side of that score line and do that Okay, so then that will be when you first open your album, you'll have these two pocket tabs. And these pockets will be big enough to put um, four by six uh, cut aparts or photos in. They're going to be nice. So let's grab a magnet here, real quick, and um, we'll set that magnet. And then we'll be done with that part. And then we'll just come back and Okay, we'll just come back and um, paper that later. Okay, so and then sometimes for a little trick on when you set your magnets, sometimes what I like to do, especially if you're doing something like this, if you take a post-it note and then just kind of line up the post-it notes where you know the bottom pocket will be. So then you kind of know where the area is that you have to kind of stay within to put your magnets on. Kind of helps me out a little bit. So that's a little, little trick that I learned along the way. 
So then we should have proper magnet placement right there. So I'm gonna take, if I can find my score tape. Oh, there it is. Well, that's not it. Where is it? Good heavens, I lost my score tape. Okay, well, I'll find it later. This is not quite the score tape size I wanted, but that's okay. All right, so there's that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna play with, let's do this first, and then we'll do the waterfalls because I'm really, really excited about the waterfalls. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, this um, this section right here, so the right midsection flap, we're gonna put some more stuff on here. So I have four pieces of cardstock and they're six and a half by four. And these are going to all be scored at half an inch on one side. So we're going to end up with four pages that do this. These are going to set on top of these flaps and give us yet more room for playing. So let's put this aside for a second. And I am losing all my stuff. Okay. So fold and burnish. All of these, again, they're four by six and a half, and we're going to score them at half an inch on the six and a half inch side so that you will end up with four by six pages. You will need four of these. Okay, super simple. Once you do this, we are gonna want to liner the corners. That. Okay. All right, let's grab our book. So again, these are going to just simply adhere to these pages here. So um, just make sure that you don't need to like cut, you know, an extra little piece off or anything if you're, if you're, um, you know, cutting wasn't quite right because you want to make sure that these pages kind of move freely once they're all adhered. Okay. So really super simple to add these. You just add these. You can, um, you'll do the pattern paper afterwards on this one. So I'm just making sure those are nice and lined up right on the edge of that flap okay so then it's going to open like this and we've got a mess going on here don't you love crafting when you can like make a mess and your desks end up i mean it always starts out so orderly and i've got everything in a row Okay, right to the edge of that flap. Make sure it's nice and centered. Like that. Okay, so you can see that that flap now has two flaps of its own. Okay, we're just going to do that to the top flap as well. Okay, last one. And you will need a couple magnets for this as well. Right to the edge. Like that. Okay. So um, I did mine um, so that they open opposite. I'm going to do it so they open opposite. So it doesn't really matter which way you do it. 
but you will need a couple of magnets. So I'm just going to, um, I guess that's good enough. That's good right there. We'll go ahead and set one there. And then flip it down and put it there. So we got our magnet there. And we'll put that one here. Okay. So now we have the top one will open to the left and the bottom one will open to the right. And then they will open top and bottom. Okay, so there's that. All right, and then we've got the middle piece here. Let's look at the middle piece here for a second. We're going to put a belly band here. So this belly band is super simple. It's nine by two inches, and we're just gonna put it across here, and then we'll put pattern paper underneath it. So we will just score it um, at half an inch on each end of the nine inch side. And then you don't need to miter the corners um, for this one. And we're just going to glue it down right in the middle. And then what I did was I created a stopper that I'm going to use for this so that when you put things in, it won't come out the bottom. And I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm going to line this up. This is 8 inch tall. So we'll line it up here and one inch to either side of that zero mark there. I love this ruler. And it should be right in between our score lines. Just like that. Okay. There we go. Okay, so belly band in the midsection right there. Um, and while I'm thinking about that, so I'll put my pattern paper on the bottom, put my pattern paper here, and then I took some of the um, the uh, chipboard pieces, and I'm going to put the stopper right here. And basically all I did was I layered them, and I did some with a little bit of foam tape here um, to kind of uh, puff them up a little bit. And then I'm going to glue it to the bottom once I get the pattern paper on. And then the, the tags will slip right behind that piece, and then it'll make sure that they don't fall out the bottom. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some really fun waterfalls. So basically our base is done. So let's kind of go through the base, what we've done. Here's our cover. It'll open up. We're going to put a waterfall piece here. Then the next thing you'll see are the pocket flat pages. Then we'll open this up. We're going to put another waterfall piece here. So you, it's going to be kind of symmetrical. So then we're going to have this page. We'll cover this with pattern paper, and then this will be a pocket. We'll glue this down after we add the pattern paper. And then we'll turn the page, and over here, we'll have another pocket here. We'll put pattern paper on first before we glue it down. And then we'll have another pocket here. So you could either um, glue it on the two sides or leave one side open and have kind of an open pocket here, whichever um, you prefer. Then we'll have um, the right side page where we have our two flaps that open up like this and then they open up like that and then it will open up like this and you will have another pocket right here and then the midsection will have our nice belly band okay so let's look at my waterfall ideas I had some kind of cool ideas with those so you saw the mini album that I had just made that I um, was really excited about. I thought it was really, really cute. Um, I called it a stacked page mini album. Um, but then if you totally fold it, then the spine can actually create a, uh, a waterfall. If you fold it flat, it creates a waterfall. So that's pretty much what I did for this first one. Um, I wanted to play with that design. So we have three pieces of paper that you'll need. You need one that's six by eight and a half, one that's six by nine and a half, and one that's six by ten and a half. This will give you half inch 
gussets for your pages, just like a regular waterfall assembly that you would do where you make the half inch tabs. But when we stack them together, um, these measurements will, will give you that. And on each of the pieces, you'll just simply do for all of them because this is six, six inches wide and we're gonna have four inch pages. So on every single one of them, you'll score it four and then turn it around and score it four, easy peasy. And for each of the lengths that we do, the eight and a half, nine and a half, and ten and a half, you'll do the same thing. Put it in your board, score it at four, turn it, score it at four, and so on. And that will give you the graduated spines. So I'll do that to all three pieces. And then the next thing you will need is a um, piece for the closure. And I'm going to do another uh, magnetic closure. And this piece is five and a half by two, and you'll just do a two inch or excuse me, a half an inch piece for the tab. Okay, so we'll have that. And then we'll fold and burnish our pages like so. Okay, so then the widest spine piece will go on the bottom. So the longest piece of cardstock that we make will go on the bottom. We're going to grab our board here because I'm going to use the markings here to help me lay this down. So I'm going to take the next graduated piece and I'm going to just fold it like this. I'm going to put some glue on here. This is just like I did with that stacked mini that I just did the um, tutorial on um, to go with the bin that I created for the design team. And so I'm going to line this up. And again, this is going to be a half an inch gusset. So I'm just going to line it up and then a half an inch away from that score. I'm going to lay that down. Okay, and just make sure that everything's nice and stuck here. All right, and then I'm gonna grab my other one, do the same thing. This one will have a half inch spine. And I'm gonna just line this up again, nice and straight, half an inch from the scores there. Make sure that we're nice and burnished. So then when you fold this up, you'll see, so this is, this is essentially how I made my mini alum. Okay, same thing. But when you squish it flat, it now becomes a waterfall. And this spine piece right here is how you glue it onto the page. So, Having said that, let me find the page here. So what I'm gonna do is you have to put the pattern paper on first and you have to put the belly band piece on first. So this one here is gonna go on this side of the page. So we're gonna have to put our paper on, backtrack. We're gonna put this on first and then we're gonna do that and then we're gonna fold that up like that. This, We'll glue on top of there and boom, you have this really cute little waterfall. So let's do that really quick. I'm gonna do, and you know, you could, if you wanted to, put an eighth inch gusset here to help accommodate for the pages. I'm gonna do that really quick just because I feel like it. So if you wanna do that, you don't have to, um, but if you want to, all you gotta do is um, go in one eighth of an inch from the half inch mark. So you'll end up having a score at three eighths and at one half. And then that'll give you a little bit of wiggle room also, and it'll still keep, you know, the length of your closure here. Okay. So, We'll do that, and then we're gonna find the middle 
and let's see so middle by right about there and making sure to um making sure that we're in the middle, we're gonna do that. Okay, so there you go. So that goes down first. Pattern paper goes down next. And I did um, pre-ink my papers. Um, I used some distressing ink on them. If I was doing white paper, I probably wouldn't have done that. Or even ivory paper, I probably wouldn't have done that. But since I'm using dark brown, I thought that that would look a lot nicer. And let me see, I want to make sure my butterflies look right side up. It's kind of hard to tell. I think, I think this way. All right. So then I'm just going to lay my paper down. I cut my paper uh, an eighth inch, sh you know, smaller than the paper that I'm trying to cover here. Just like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna grab my waterfall. My waterfall is just gonna sit right here. And before I do that though, I'm gonna actually trim. Some of these papers look a little bit off, but that's the beauty of, uh... there we go, that looks better. You can trim it up a little bit. This is gonna set right here. So I'm gonna turn it over, this big spine piece that actually would be a spine if you were to make this an album, that's actually gonna be the attachment. So we're just gonna attach it. And I'm going to throw this guy right in the middle. And I'm going to eyeball this, so hold on just a second. Let me move it so I can actually see it. All right. I'm going to do that like that. And then this is down just like that. Make sure it's all stuck. And there you go. So then you just add a magnet and then there's our little stacked waterfall um, way of doing a um, waterfall. So you don't have to do all these separate pieces. It's just three pieces, but it gives you six pages to do that with. Okay, and then a nice big area here. The other thing I like about this is you guys know I like my folded edge on this side, um, so there's no tab at the back of the uh, waterfall. So this just gives a nice area um, for all those pages. So then we'll add a magnet, and we've got a little bit of a gusset here, so we can do that. And I think I hear my grandkids on FaceTime, so in the living room, so hold on just a second. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. It was grandbabies. We got to do some FaceTime with our grandbabies. Haven't seen them since all this has gone down, so it was really nice to see. So thank you for uh, being patient. So anyways, when we left off, we did our waterfall over here. Now we're going to do the waterfall on the other side, and it's going to be a little bit different, which is kind of, it's going to be kind of fun. So, oh, let's set the magnet real quick. Why not? While we're here. And then that way it'll help stay closed while we do this. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to Put that magnet on there. And since I added that little eighth inch gusset, just make sure that we keep that eight inch, eight inch gusset, eight inch gusset. Oh, nope, I didn't. There we go. Move to the side here a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's work on the other one. So, this is going to be, uh, what did I call it? A double stacked waterfall. So we're going to make it so that, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll just show you. Okay, so what you will need are two pieces that are eight and a half by six. And again, they're going to be six by or four by six pages. So we're going to score at four and turn it around and score at four again. So you'll need two of those. Eight and a half by six, score it four on each side. Two of those, and then we will need two that are nine and a half by six. And again, score it four, turn, and score it four. 
Okay, so we have our four by six pages. So we'll need two of those, two of the ones we just did. And then we're gonna put these together. So they're only gonna be two pieces for each one. We're gonna make two of them. Okay, so let's real quick fold, whoop, fold and burnish. And I probably could have done one of these ahead of time, but I didn't. So just bear with me. And maybe I will fast forward this. Okay, so now we have our two pieces, so we're gonna grab one that has the one and a half inch spine and one that has a half inch spine, and we're gonna build that. So just like we did before, we're gonna do that and make two of these. So I'm gonna line up that score on my grid here, and then at the half inch mark, I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down Nice and centered, hopefully. There we go. Okay, so we have the one. We're gonna do that again. So we'll put glue on the half inch spine here. And then line this up. Half inch away from the score line. Okay, so we have our two books. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, one of these is gonna go on the top, one of these is gonna go on the bottom. And they're going to be seven inches long total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, like this. So what I'm gonna do is because we're gonna to need to adhere them down, I wanna make sure that they're gonna be lined up properly. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a couple of binder clips here, and I lined it up so that there's it's seven inches, so I've got one coming from the top, one coming from the bottom, and then I'm just going to, where'd my other clip go? Did I not grab another clip? Here we go. I'm just gonna clip those down, okay? So now I have a piece like this. So now it's ready to lay down in the book. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some ribbon because we're going to use a ribbon closure on this one. And I'm going to grab my book and my ribbon and we'll go ahead and set this. So where did... Oh, mercy me. I cannot keep my score tape in the right spot to save my life. There we go, found it. All right, so right in the middle, here's our spines here. So right in the middle of that spine, we're gonna add a piece of ribbon for the closure. And I cut the ribbon at about 12 inches. And actually it's seam binding, I should say that. It's seam binding. Um, and it's part of what I got in the design team package. And it's really super pretty. She gave me a lot. I'm gonna be using it a lot with the embellishing part of this project too. So we're using some magnets for closures. We're using some seam binding for closures. Let's see if I get that. Nope, I didn't quite get that nice and flat. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. And then if you want to, to keep it out of the way, we can go ahead and tie it. 
for now and set that aside for just a second and then grab your book. You will have to add your pattern paper to the page. So here's our book. We're going to open up this front cover and this particular album piece is going to go there. So we're going to add our pattern paper to this side. Okay, again, I cut my pattern paper at um, an eighth of an inch shorter and, you know, less wide than the piece I'm covering. I just love this paper line. It is so pretty and vintagey. Um, I think it's just, it's just gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. All right. So. All right. So then our album, we're, so here's our album or our, uh, waterfall, I should say. So we've got one coming from the top, one coming from the bottom. Okay. So we flattened out the books. Then these are the spine pieces. These would actually be the spines. So I'm going to add the glue to the spine only on both pieces. Okay. So leave the bit middle open because that's actually a page. It's not glued down. So we don't want it glued down. Um, so then you're going to go ahead and center this right on your page. And I'm going to eyeball it here. It's about a half an inch on um, all sides. Make sure it's lined up nice. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and slip those off. And I'm going to open this up just so I can... Go ahead and make sure everything's glued down properly. I'm going to press it down. Okay. So each of these little leaves will have eight pages. Front and back, so four. Okay. And the reason why I'm calling it a double stacked album is because of what's going to happen next. <laughs> So, when you fold it down, you're going to alternate your pages, like so. So when you first see it, it's going to look like it's a usual flap, but when you open it up, you're going to have a doubled waterfall that cascades, and then you're going to have a nice place in here that you could do something else. You could put a total, um, you know, picture in there, too. So. That is what I was so excited about, the double stacked way of doing a waterfall. So this gives you a lot of pictures, um, opportunities, and it's cute and it's tidy and it's a little unexpected because it's not the usual waterfall. And it's super simple to put together. Um, now I didn't do more than that because of this page size, but if you have different, you know, bigger pages, then you could totally do um, you know, more pages with that. Uh, but anyway, that's my double stacked waterfall. So now the album is basically complete except for decoration um, and putting the covers and stuff on. So again, going through, here's the cover. Here's our double stacked waterfall that has the cascading opening up and down waterfall pages. Then we have our pockets, our pocket flaps here. We are also, let's see, um, there are a couple of different things that I still need to do. So um, we forgot to do the triangle pockets. So these are the last two things we're gonna do. So I, had, I, I just had an idea to do this. I thought it would be a fun thing to do underneath here to add a little triangle pocket where you could tuck something. So basically this is just a four by four piece of cardstock it's in the cutting guide and I just cut it into triangles now I you can just glue it down or you can actually do the half inch gussets whatever you want to do um, I'm just going to glue this one down um, 
to make your pocket. And I thought it would be kind of a fun other, you know, little element to have here. So just glue that on top of your patterned paper. And then I had a piece of patterned paper, or, or yeah, I have another piece of patterned paper that I thought I would glue on top of that. And that would make a pretty little pocket to tuck some things in. And I have an idea for that. Okay, so there's that. And then um, the second pocket, I, where did I want to put that? Yes, the second triangle pocket, I want to put underneath this midsection here that flips up and down. So this right page, I thought it would be cute right there. So let's do that. So I've already pre, whoop, you know what? I just remembered. I have to double check that. Yep, I gotta cut it a little bit shorter. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so this is where the triangle pockets go. All right, just like that. Okay. All right. And again, if you wanted to do um, some half inch gussets and then lay this pocket down, you totally could. But I chose to just glue them down and, and make a little pocket that way. And I'm gonna do this opposite of the other one, just cause I want to. Okay, and then our little piece of Pretty pink gingham paper. That is adorable. All right. So there is that. Okay. Okay. So we have our little pocket underneath our flaps there. Okay. So what is next? I think that's it. I think that's it for the construction of the actual album itself. Um, and a couple of things that I am thinking about, I'm put, thinking about putting a charm on the spine. So I'm probably going to do that. And um, anyways, um, you guys will see the video um, soon on um, what this looks like when I'm all done. I'm gonna do a ribbon closure, so I'm gonna put the ribbon on underneath the pattern paper here. And then this book will open up like this and have the waterfall have the pockets that'll open up here we've got a second waterfall in a different method of making it then we've got our piece where we're gonna actually make a pocket out of this but we need to put pattern paper on it first this will open up again pocket pocket we're gonna have our middle flap section but that both flaps open up like that and then like this with a little triangle pocket here then that'll open up to show a pocket here. Again, put the pattern paper on. Now, if you wanted to just keep it as a flap for a bigger page, you could. Um, I'm gonna leave it as a pocket. And then we have our belly band in the, in the back. So there is my album. And I hope you like the tutorial. Um, 
so thank you for watching and have a really crafty day. I can't wait to see what else Tamara sends me for the next design team project. I'm having fun with this. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm back. I almost forgot. I was going to show you what embellishments I'm coming up with. So in the design team package, I got some washi tape. Where did it go? Here it is. So I got a roll of washi tape that went with this line, and I've used almost all of it because I wanted to come up with some ideas about how to use it in my decorating of this album. So you'll see this in the final um, video where I do the walkthrough and show you how I did it. But I came up with a bunch of different um, little ideas that I thought would be fun um, to use in my embellishment of this album. So let's first talk about this. This is super simple. It's been around forever, not my idea, obviously. But um, I just took a piece of twine and took the tape and put it over the tape and then cut out different banner shapes so I can use this as a banner in um, the project over across the, the page. Um, I think, I'm not sure where I'm gonna use this. I'm not sure where I'm gonna use um, most of this stuff, but um, we will find out in the final video. Um, <laughs> so anyways, I just made a piece of banner. Not used up some washi tape there. Um, in the folio that I made for the bin, the stacked page um, album that I did, I made some border strips that I used on the spine. I made a couple strips out of a piece of um, white artisan cardstock that I had left over. I'm going to use those to help embellish. I used my favorite punch. You can use any punch you want, but this was my favorite. And um, so I went ahead and made a couple strips. I'm going to use those. Um, the other thing that I did was I made a ruffle with some lace that I had in my stash and sewed it together. So what I did was I took three pieces of white cardstock that were 12 inches long and I scored it at inch, half, inch, half, inch, half, so on, so on, so on. And then when I stuck it in my sewing machine on top of a straight piece of lace, as I was sewing it, I used a zigzag stitch and then I just folded it like this as I was sewing and sewed it right to the lace. And then when I came to the end, I added the next piece of paper and went so on, so on, so on. It took three strips of that paper covered with the washi tape to make that piece that was, it's that long. So it's probably, it's not even 12 inches, <laughs> it's 11 inches. But I can use this to embellish um, my book as well. So I'm gonna use this as part of my embellishing on my book. So I did, um, you know, you can make flowers. I just went through my drawer. I don't know how many flower punches I have, but I have like probably way too many. And I just went and picked some and put some together. And then I also used the little enamel dots in the center of the flowers. And what I did, I don't know if you can see it, but on the big flower and on the two little flowers here, those are white pieces of cardstock that I covered with the washi tape. And then I just punched the shapes out. So that's another way that I use the washi. So I did that, um, and just to show you, um, when I was playing and practicing, a couple of them didn't make it um, make the cut, but <laughs> I just took a little piece of paper and I covered it with a washi and then I just punched out of that. So that's how I made those flowers. Um, I also did the same thing and created this little butterfly out of a piece of the pattern pa or the paper from the collection that I used. And then um, I used some of the enamel dots to make the body of the butterfly. Um, this paper line screams butterfly, so yeah, I had to do that. So I just did that, made a little butterfly. That's my favorite, my two favorite butterfly punches. I use those a lot. Um, then um, I also had a punch that makes labels. So I covered another piece of, um, a small piece of white artisan cardstock with the washi tape and then um, punched that and then the oval part comes with that punch as well and made some labels. So we've got some labels to use. Um, another idea that I had was this is a three and a quarter by four and a quarter piece of white cardstock that you can put a journaling card on and there's a pull tab right there for you. So another way that you can use your um, washi, you can use that. Um, the other thing that I did, the last thing that I did with the washi was I used my favorite punch again and I created a um, hinged binding for these two giant tags that I had in my stash. And I just layered them with um, some artisan cardstock and then um, some of the pattern paper in the collection and then created the binding 
for this little tag booklet. Um, I used uh, hole reinforcements that I made with just white office hole reinforcements with some gold um, Sharpie pen and used that for the holes. And then um, I used some of the seam binding um, to create the bow in here. I didn't do it for both of them because I thought it would be too bulky, but for the front page of this little booklet, I thought it worked out just perfect. So um, those are the things that I did to make some embellishments and what I wanted to try and do to use up some of the washi and, and think of some other ways to use it. And um, I think I come up with some pretty cute ideas. Um, this one doesn't use any of the washi yet, but I did make a tag shape um, fold out booklet. And I had in the pattern paper that I put on top, I just punched two little holes and threaded the seam binding through that and tied a bow. And so that's gonna go in the book somewhere. So I got that. So there you go. That's what I did with some of the washi. That's what I'm going to use and how I'm going to use it. And like I said, I used a lot of washi making this stuff. So <laughs> it was kind of fun to, to try and think of some new ideas. So there you go. Um, that's it. Now I'm done. And I will uh, see you later. Thank you again for watching. And I hope you like the video. Um, I hope you make the books. If you do, please let me know. Please post pictures. Um, again, visit countrycraftcreations.com. Get your supplies. This was Cartabella's Farmhouse Market, and it is absolutely adorable, and I, you need to go get it. You just need to go get it. Okay, talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.